Hi, welcome back. I feel personally victimized by every single one of you that are watching right now because you have influenced me to go out and not only break one of my no buy products for the year, but just purchase several other drugstore products. And it's not okay because I'm the influencer here. Just kidding, I actually hate the term influencer. Anytime I have to fill out my title on paperwork, I just put media creator. That's literally what my, my title says when I work with a company, media creator. Anyways, back to the topic of this video. Just recently, there have been so many things I've been noticing repeat comments on as far as products that uh, people want me to test out, which is just, it just blows my mind that people take into consideration my opinion on things before they buy them, but I guess it's a thing. And uh, I've been asked recently the most asked uh, thing for me to check out or try are these new Real Techniques light layer brushes. Now, if you remember in my no buy video for 2020, I said I was not buying any more brushes. Here I am two months into the year and uh, I've got brushes in my hands, but um, okay, there were four, I think, total in this collection. I only got two because I don't know if this is just me. I feel like it's not just me. I cannot, it just, I cringe when I go into Sephora and look at the Real Techniques brushes and they're not buy one, get one, half off. I just feel like they should permanently be buy one, get one half off because pretty much 70% of the time they are. So of course they weren't buy one, get one half off. And I was like, you know what? We're just gonna get two and we're gonna see how it goes. So I got the face and the cheek, the light layer complexion and light layer blush brush, just because those two interested me the most. And then I saw two more, which who knows, might pick those up. We'll see. Probably the second most popular request have been these two cream blushes. The Milani Cheek Kiss, which I have been getting comments for for a couple of months now. I have been seeing these in store. I have been avoiding because, let's just face it, with my Daniel Sandler collection, my Nude Sticks collection, I've got a pretty hefty cream blush collection right now. Uh, but I just, I decided to go for it because I still, I still see the comments. And then these just came out, uh, the Maybelline Cheek Heat. And I've actually tried this one. So I uh, got a couple of those. And then as far as everything else goes, uh, I did pick up this new powder from Physicians Formula. So we have a plethora of new things to talk about. Um, and if anyone makes fun of my wet Marie Antoinette hair during this video, we're done. So to test out this light layer complexion brush, I'm gonna be using also, this is um, just so nostalgic for me because this was the liquid foundation I would buy in college if I decided I didn't wanna wear Bare Minerals for the day. And it's the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Liquid Makeup. Rediscovered it recently. Uh, Neutrogena is one of my favorite drugstore brands, truthfully. I think the shade selection is totally not there, but you know what? For the past, I feel 12 years of my life, I've been 40 nude. So I rediscovered this recently, and you know what? It's very similar to their uh, Hydro Boost Skin Tint, which you know you all know that is like my ultimate drugstore foundation product, except it has a bit more coverage to it. So if you feel like you need more coverage and the skin tint just wasn't really working for you, I mean, I know this is an old basic foundation, but I feel like it's stuck around for a reason. So um, it's the one I'm gonna use and let's just go ahead. Oh, I can already tell I like this brush. Me like, oh, it is applying just seamlessly. I, I get very skeptical about kind of duo fiber style brushes like this because oftentimes they can give you a streaky appearance, but I'm not experiencing that at all. Oh, buffed out quick, didn't it? Ugh, I just feel like Real Techniques can do no wrong. There are very few brushes and products from Real Techniques 
that I don't like. And you know what? I feel like my Ulta in particular, like my local Ulta, should just hire me part time to be a Real Techniques rep. Every time I go in there, there's someone looking at the Real Techniques brushes. They don't know what they're looking for. I was literally in there yesterday picking these up and there was um, an older lady and her husband and they were asking about brushes to, I believe this was the store manager and she was like, yeah, they're on this aisle and she just walked away. They had no clue what they were looking for. I could tell her husband was very concerned about the pricing of, they must have been looking at some higher end brushes because he was like, we can't spend $40 on a powder brush. So she was just perplexed at all of the brushes that were in front of her and I had to break it down really quick for her and be like, yo, you want the life changer, you want the game changer, this is it, the Real Techniques Blush Brush. I know it's called Blush, but trust me, you're gonna use it for every single thing on your face and it's probably gonna last you for the next 15 years. I mean, and it's true, I still have my first generation Real Techniques blush brush, which has to be nearing, what, seven, six, seven years old at this point and it looks the exact same from the day that I bought it. So um, I'm just, I'm a ride or die for Real Techniques. Top five makeup sponsors of my life, Real Techniques, Daniel Sandler Watercolors, Laura Mercier Caviar Stick, Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer could probably have a category all on its own. You fill in the final two. I mean, most of you know when I find something or a brand that I like, it's stuck, you're stuck with me. I'm mixing two age rewind shades because I can never find my perfect shade in this concealer, yet it's pretty much the only one I seem to remotely like at the drugstore. I have um, been trying the Neutrogena has a radiant cream concealer, which sounds very familiar to NARS one. And you know what? It, it kind of looks similar, but this one I've been using and I do like it, but today I'm just gonna mix these two uh, cause I do, I don't know, I want a little bit more coverage. I'm gonna use that same brush. Now, they had a smaller, more tapered brush. I think it was the highlighter uh, light complexion brush or the whatever, the from the light series. There was a smaller one. I was very tempted to get it because I thought, well, that would be very good for concealer because it just had the perfect shape, but I held back. I mean, this is performing nicely. I would say though with concealer, I tend to either just prefer to use something that is a little bit more not as duo fiber-ish and something, or maybe just my finger. I'm gonna toss a little bit of my Physician's Formula Sculpting Bronzer on. I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand and keep using the same brush. I just feel like it'll probably apply a little bit more seamless if I just pop it on the back of my hand as opposed to taking it directly. I will say this brush probably would be a good investment uh, for those of you who are just getting into cream products because you know oftentimes you can use too much, you can apply too much, it can get pretty heavy handed and this does apply in such a lightweight buildable manner that I think it would be a really good learning tool for those types of products. I'm digging it. I think it looks good. Everything applied very seamlessly. So yay on this brush. I think it was um, $8.99 full price. So let's move into the cheek one. I've saved this one for cream blush, although I feel like you could just as easily use either one of these with blush or vice versa. I feel like this blush brush could easily be used as even a foundation brush because ultimately it's just a different shape from this one. Truthfully, you could probably go for one or the other. So um, let's go ahead and move into these cream blushes. I wanna use both because I've already used the Cheek Heat, which is obviously very mimicky of the Glossier Cloud Paint just by the little cap and the tube in general. However, 
I'll say right off the bat, I kind of like this Maybelline formula better than the Glossier one. I've always had an issue with the Glossier one, number one, for how much product comes out. You have to be very, very careful when you distribute the product out of the tube. And number two, I've always felt like the liquid, the moisture or water content is a little bit higher than the pigment content. And so for that reason on me, I have to be very careful when I apply them because the water content of the blush disturbs the base on me if I'm not super, super careful applying them. The Maybelline Cheek Heats, these are more of a thick formula. They are it's a tad bit on the thicker side. I feel like just because they're not as liquidy, uh, they don't disturb the base as much. So I got the shade 15 Nude Burn, which is actually really just kind of like a true soft pink color. And then in the Milani one, I got Nude Flush, which kind of looks like it's gonna be more of a brownish, nude color. Yes, it does appear that way. And uh, I'm going to mix these two because actually, you know what, I'm going to apply this one first and I'm going to apply the pink on top of it. Just Okay, so this Milani one is actually reminding me formula wise, it's very similar to the Glossier one. So um, let's just see, I've just got a tad bit on the back of my hand. It is kind of like a nice caramelly uh, it just looks like a caramel tone color to me, and I'm just gonna pop it on. Actually applies very nicely. I don't find that it's disturbing anything underneath, but I do think that this brush is a really great asset because it just doesn't allow for really hard pressure on the skin. So, um, hmm. Yeah, no complaints with uh, disturbing the base really on that formula. And then I wanna top it with a little bit of the cheek heat just so um, you guys can kind of see it too. The cheek heats are definitely much more of a thicker gel style formula. I think they may have just a tad bit more pigment to them as well. Okay, this is Physicians Formula Natural Defense Finishing Powder. It has SPF in it and I got mine in the shade light. I like the packaging. It's got like a little cloud surrounding it. Uh, someone was very ill with me in my last video because my Physicians Formula Healthy Powder that I use, it's like my favorite drugstore powder, I found out after uploading that video that apparently that line has been discontinued. They discontinued those powders. And so in the info box, I just, um, you know, put a, a notion or a caption saying that it had been discontinued. Someone commented and they were like, you know, it's not that hard to look up a product before you post it to see if it's been discontinued. First of all, Rachel, I'm devastated by this and you're just digging the knife in deeper. So yeah, my favorite drugstore powder has been discontinued. So I thought I would pick this one up. I got it in the shade light. Uh, my Ulta does not carry the full color range in anything. They carry like three of the most popular colors and that's it. So I'm hoping online there's more colors in these powders because I, I swear there was like three colors to pick from. It's not looking bad so far. My biggest turnoff is there is a massive scent coming from this. I don't know if it's the SPF, but it smells very floral. It smells very perfumey, which is kind of counterintuitive to me, to Physicians Formulas, you know, marketing. I. I don't know. It definitely smells like a straight up Estee Lauder perfume. I smell like Elizabeth Taylor right now. Okay, I'm not doing drugstore on my brows right now because I still cannot find anything that matches the color of my eyebrows at the drugstore. Everything turns orange on my eyebrows. So I'm just going to do a couple little flicks of my usual brow blade and call it a day. This is actually another product that you all inspired me to buy and it's the Ulta Beauty Cream Eyeshadows. These are more liquid creams and this is the only one that I have right now but I have to admit I love the shade and they stay on all day. Very easy to apply. This is in the shade Game Over. Very similar to Laura Mercier's Caviar Stig and Eau Naturelle and also the Bobbi Brown um, 
her cream eyeshadow. There was a shade that I used to use all the time. It was, what was it called? Pebble or beach something maybe? Sandstone. I, I think it was called sandstone. Um, don't know where I got pebble or beach from. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is just take some of this cream shadow on the back of my hand and with a clean blender brush, I'm just going to sweep that over my lid it is just the most lovely kind of pebble tone shade. Now what I wanna do is take the Maybelline Line Express eyeliner and do a very smudgy kind of kitten flick. I might pull out a brown shadow to further smudge it out. This is a great dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Perfect Powder Pencil or Classic Eye Powder Pencil. I loved using that back in the day because it gives you a very soft uh, feline type of look because it's a powder packed into a pencil form. And I feel like the formula of this one is identical, not to mention it comes with a little smudger on the end, which helps you achieve that smudgy style look. So I am just going to do a slight little kitten flick here and smudge it out. I'm gonna take this dark matte brown on a little smudgy brush. This is the L'Oreal La Nude Intense. I think this is the volume two palette, the one that's got more cool tone shades in it. And I'm just going to use this to, again, kind of smudge this out, make it a little bit more smoky. So what I've kind of done here is instead of keeping this just a straight line flick, I've blended the line upwards onto the mobile lid just to where it's kind of like this gradient from dark brown into that really nice pebble tone shade. All right, so now we've got a nice little toasty, smudgy, I look going on here and I'm going to use a new drugstore mascara. This is the Bambi Eye Mascara from L'Oreal, I believe. I almost bought this at Ulta uh, or last week or a couple weeks ago and I was like, yeah, you know what? I need to use up what I've got. I wanted to buy it because Camille Rowe was the model for it and I just think she's a natural French effortless beauty. You know what I'm saying? Like she just, she doesn't wear a ton of makeup. She doesn't really care like about what other people think. She's got that cool girl French vibe going on. So I was very much inspired to get it, but I passed and then I kid you not the next day, it showed up on my doorstep from L'Oreal. So bless up. Well, I could already tell by the style of brush that it's probably not gonna be my favorite mascara. It has more of like that uh, rubbery, uh, a plasticky style brush. My lashes tend to do better with one of the natural like haired brushes. So I think that's why I like the CoverGirl Exhibitionist so much. It's kind of got the traditional mascara brush fiber wand on it whereas this one is definitely more of that rubbery plastic and I, for some reason I just feel like they don't work as well on my lashes. Okay I have to say not super impressed with that mascara but oh well uh, I'm ready to move into the lips so I can complete this look. I feel like I just look like a robot until the lipstick comes on and then it's popping. So I'm gonna use either Peekaboo Neutral from NYX or Natural. I think this is just Natural from NYX. You know how everyone complains about not liking to buy drugstore makeup in store because people have tampered with it? Let me tell you one thing that you're gonna guarantee is not tampered with, and that's these NYX lip liners or lip pencils. They are absolutely sealed for Satan and, uh, 
Even there's been times when I have kept the plastic past the cap on mine because I can't be bothered to spend eight hours peeling the plastic off of these dang things. So 10 out of 10 tamper proof and they're great lip liners. Probably my favorite at the drugstore. Let's see if we can get a clean rip off this one. Oh, that was satisfying. That was very satisfying. Okay, even though I'm more drawn to natural, which is this one, the more brown toned one, I think I'm gonna go with Peekaboo Neutral, and I may just use that as my all over lip color, we'll see. You know what, no, I'm gonna go with natural. <laughs> All right, so uh, final look here. I overall think I enjoyed most of these new products. Really like the, you know what? I just got my bangs trimmed. This side never wants to cooperate. I've got nice flowy like choppiness on this side and then it's just like stuck to my head and in a very awkward fashion on this side. Always happens. Anyways, I would say that the brushes are definitely a win for me. I think you could multitask with either or of these. I think you could use the blush brush for foundation as well as bronzer, concealer, blush, all that. Same thing goes for complexion. If you want something that is a little bit fuller, I think this one would probably give you just slightly more coverage, but you could still use it like I did today with bronzer and uh, with concealer as well. So I hope you enjoyed. And if you have any questions for me, leave them down below and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.